Well, good afternoon. Uh, I want to uh, let you know where we stand with regard to uh, the state's response to the coronavirus. Uh, I'm, I'm very proud that the state response is being led by the uh, Texas uh, State Health Services uh, Commissioner, Dr. John Hellerstedt. Uh, he and his team work very closely with the Texas Division of Emergency Management uh, and led by Chief Nim Kidd to coordinate uh, the state's response to COVID-19. Going back from our, our very beginning, I, I first began working on this uh, in mid-January when I first talked to Vice President Pence, uh, and then the day after that when I talked to uh, President Trump on the day that the very first person who contracted COVID-19 in the United States was identified. A couple of days later, on January the 24th, uh, the Department of State Health Services began leading daily calls with public health authorities, healthcare providers, city and county officials, as well as school districts across the state of Texas. The next week, on January 31st, the Department of State Health Services activated the State Medical Operations Center. That was followed by the uh, DSHS opening 10 public health labs to perform COVID-19 testing throughout the state of Texas. We're proud to say that the state of Texas is filled with outstanding leaders at the local level, leaders who have done a remarkable job of safeguarding their communities and responding to the early stages of the coronavirus. We're also fortunate to have some of the premier local health officials in America who are advising their local officials. Well, the first Texan tested positive for COVID-19, who was not one of the people who was repatriated from the cruise ships, was tested positive on March the 4th. A week later, I received the first request for a disaster declaration from a local official. The next day, I declared a state disaster in response to the coronavirus. Later that day, which was last Friday, the President declared a national emergency concerning the coronavirus. That same day, last Friday in the afternoon, the CDC issued heightened standards for public health. To show you how swiftly moving this entire process is, what I just told you happened last Friday, the following Monday being the Monday of this week things began to change even more rapidly. The CDC further heightened public health standards. Beginning this past Monday, the health standards included limiting gatherings of people to no more than 10 people, putting certain restrictions on um, uh, entities like restaurants, bars, gyms, etc. It's important to know that since I made my disaster declaration last Friday, the facts in the, state of in the state of Texas have also changed. When I declared a disaster last Friday, there were 39 cases of Texans who tested positive for COVID-19. Today, that number has grown by more than 300%. Today, we have more than 140 people in the state of Texas who have tested positive for COVID-19. When I declared a disaster last Friday, there were zero deaths related to COVID-19 in the state of Texas. As of today, there are at least three deaths related to COVID-19. When I declared the disaster just last Friday, six days ago, there were 10 counties in the state of Texas where COVID-19 had been identified. As we gather today, there are at least 27 counties where COVID-19 has been identified. Texas historically has a proven model in the way that we respond to natural disasters. A lot of people don't know, but Texas actually leads the nation in natural disaster declarations. And through uh, the numerous disasters that we have worked our way through, we have a very effective system where the governor will make a disaster declaration and local officials with proven experience are able to respond knowing their communities better than anybody else. In doing so, what happens is the governor empowers the local officials to be able to take the action swiftly in order to help their communities. This works well 
when we're dealing with the regional disasters where local officials know more about what's going on the ground. It helped us respond more swiftly and more effectively to enormous natural disasters like Hurricane Harvey. Uh, what we're dealing with now in Texas is not a local disaster or a regional disaster. It's far more than a nationwide disaster. In fact, it is an international pandemic. The traditional model that we have employed in the state of Texas for such a long time so effectively does not apply to an invisible disease that knows no geographic and no juris jurisdictional boundaries. It threatens the lives of our fellow Americans across the entire country. The appropriate response to this threat has been very well articulated by Dr. Fauci and Dr. Burks, two doctors who are leading the response for the United States of America. They have been emphatic that we as a country must swiftly elevate our response to COVID-19. They say it is essential that all Americans comply with the CDC articulated standards. All jurisdictions must work to contain the spread of COVID-19 for at least the next two weeks. That standard is echoed by Dr. Hellerstedt, the doctor who is in charge of this response for the state of Texas. He insists that Texas needs a unified, robust response to contain COVID-19. To achieve that goal, Dr. Hellerstedt earlier today declared a public health disaster in the state of Texas. Here is his declaration. My recollection is the last time this was declared in the state of Texas was 1901. This public health disaster declaration gives state and local officials important tools to ensure that we're going to be able to more and most effectively respond to this challenge. Well, to achieve the goals established by the President, by the CDC, to, to fulfill the public health disaster issued by Dr. Hellerstedt, to ensure that we maximize safety and health for all Texans, I am issuing an executive order authorized by Chapter 418. This executive order adopts for Texas the standards that have been set out by the President and by the CDC. It provides the following. Number one, every person in Texas shall avoid social gatherings in groups of more than 10. Number two, people shall avoid eating or drinking at bars, restaurants, and food courts, or visiting gyms. Simply put, there will be no dining in at bars and restaurants and gyms will be closed. Provided, however, and this is very important, that the use of drive-through, pickup, or delivery options is allowed and, in fact, highly encouraged throughout the limited duration of this executive order. Importantly, we want to emphasize that one thing important for all Texans to be able to access right now, obviously, is food. If any Texans are having challenges getting food at grocery stores, always remember the availability of getting access for your food at restaurants uh, along different types of processes. Number three, people shall not visit nursing homes or retirement centers or long-term care facilities unless to, to provide critical assistance. And number four, all schools in the state of Texas shall be temporarily closed, but this does not mean education stops. Instead, superintendents should continue to work with the Texas Education Agency to continue online or additional educational options. This order is effective at midnight tomorrow, and it continues through midnight on April the 3rd. It may be extended after that, depending upon the status of COVID-19 in Texas, as well as the recommendation, recommendations of the CDC. Very important for people to understand what I'm about, I am about to say. This executive order is not a shelter-in-place order. 
It does not prohibit people from doing things like going to the grocery store or gas stations or parks or banks. All critical infrastructure will remain open and operational. Domestic travel will be unrestricted. Government entities and businesses will continue providing essential services. Offices and workplaces, they remain open, but should only ask for essential employees to report to the place of work and where feasible, allow and encourage employees to work from home or other remote sites. Also, employees who do go to work should also practice both good hygiene as well as best practices in, in order to minimize exposure to and transmission of COVID-19. The more that people do to reduce, reduce their public contact, the sooner the COVID-19 disease will be contained and the sooner this executive order will expire. Working together, we must defeat COVID-19 with the only tool that we have available to us. We must strangle this expansion by reducing the ways that we are currently transmitting it. The executive order applies the CDC standards to achieve that goal. We are doing this now, today, so that we can get back to business as usual more quickly. Lastly, Texans have always united in times of challenges. We saw this very prolifically in the way that Texans responded to Hurricane Harvey. There were people around the city of Houston and the Harris County area whose homes have been flooded. Hundreds of thousands of people had their homes flooded. And at a time where, when streets had turned into rivers, the way Texans responded, they got out their bass boats and went into those water streams in order to rescue and help others. For several weeks at a time, Business as usual had been completely disrupted in the Harris County area region. But that did not stop or deter our fellow Texans in the way that they stepped up and responded. No one responds to challenges better than Texans. So let's muster our traditional Texas spirit and together defeat COVID-19.